Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to understand what is ASP.NET Core. If this is the first time you learn ASP.NET Core, let's go ahead and explore what does it mean. ASP.NET Core is a free, cross-platform and open source web framework and successor to the ASP.NET MVC. Microsoft have made some changes. Now they made it free and cross-platform, which means that it can work and be published on both Linux, Mac, and of course, Windows. And it's an open source. These are huge differences. The framework is a complete rewrite that combines ASP.NET MVC and ASP.NET Web API into a single programming model as we're going to see throughout the course. The ASP.NET Core contains three main frameworks. The MVC Core, the typical framework that you are probably familiar with, with some changes, of course, and Razor Pages, which is a new one, and Blazor. So let's take them one by one. Let's start with MVC Core. MVC is a structural pattern that separates an application into three main logical components, the model, the view, and the controller. Any application should follow this pattern, as we're going to see. This separation promotes code usability and more structured application architecture as we're going to see much more of the benefits that you can get out of following this pattern. So the view is what is actually presented to the user. You can consider the view as a GUI. Then you will have the model. The model is actually how your website is going to talk to a database or whatever the data source is. Then you will have the last component, which is the controller. The controller is what connects the view and the model together. So when a user requests something from the database, right up here, controller takes the request, displays a view to the user, and talks to the model. So if you have some requests, the controller receives the requests, and based on the controller, the user is going to see a view. Then the view can talk to the model, Actually, there is a point in here that the model and the view should not talk to each other. That is going to break the role of the MVC. The role of the MVC, which is separation of concern, as I'm going to discuss this in a bit. It can be done, but it's not the right thing to do, and we're going to discuss this in detail later. So, what happens is the controller is actually the one that should handle how the model and the view talk to each other, or can be the middleman to do this as you're going to see a real example, you're going to understand this much better. So what actually this pattern gives us? This pattern is going to give you a couple of benefits that's going to enhance your application. The first one, as we said, is the separation of concerns. Each of these components, each one of them has a specific role to do. The model has a role, the view has a role, the controller has a role too, which makes MVC very clean and organized, which make it easier for a web application to scale much easier. Because once your project's starting to scale, you will need to enforce some kind of a structure and rules. And if you didn't do this in a correct way, everything is going to be a mess and it is going to be very hard to scale your application or even perform small changes. But by enforcing, following the MVC pattern, you will have a much more maintainable code as we're going to see this. And because of the first reason, the separation of concerns, your code will be much easier to maintain. It will allow also multiple developers to collaborate and work together very easily. MVC Core also is search engine optimization friendly and we're going to see this in a bit. Search engine optimization means the MVC platform supports the development of SEO-friendly web pages or applications which makes it easy for search engines to find your website or your pages. It is very easy to develop SEO-friendly URLs to generate more visits for your application. One last benefit we can mention also is the test-driven development. With MVC, you can easily create tests for website an additional layer of testing will provide yet another layer of defense against unexpected behavior and this can be done very easily with MVC. So let's take a look at this example. Assuming that you're going to walk into a restaurant 
what is going to happen when you're going to order food? You're not going to go into the kitchen and take your food. That's not going to happen. What is happening is that you will have the waiter waiting for you to take the order. And then the waiter is the one responsible to go to the kitchen, get your food and get it back for you. This example is a very simple scenario for the MVC core. What do you have here? You controller, assuming that the waiter is a controller, and you are the view or the restaurant is the view in here, and the kitchen of the restaurant is the model. So you talk to the controller, the controller goes to the model or the kitchen, the kitchen or the model gets your food or your data through the waiter to you. Okay, I hope that's very easy. So let's go ahead and check the other frameworks. So the Razor Pages. Razor Pages is actually kind of new. It's a page focused framework for building dynamic data driven websites. Razor Pages takes the idea of web pages and implementing it using the platform feature originally developed for MVC framework. So if anyone familiar with ASB.NET web forms, it is kind of like the web forms, but it is using some modern technologies from the ASB.NET core. And we're going to explore this in detail. And it takes also some benefits from using the ASB.NET core. It supports cross-platform development and it can be deployed to Windows, Linux, and Mac operating systems without a problem. Razor Bridges can make coding page focused scenarios easier and much more productive than using controls and views because the MVC core takes a little bit more time to see the result from the project because there is some patterns that you have to follow which is not happening with the Razor pages as we're going to see. And the good thing is that Razor pages can be used alongside with the MVC framework. When you create a project, you're going to find that you have the DLLs and the files you need to start typing Razor pages and ASB.NET Core MVC. One of the latest frameworks that is introduced is the Blazor. Blazor is a framework for building interactive client-side web UI with .NET. So the main difference here, the big difference, it is a client-side. It's not like the Razor pages. It's not like the MVC Core. You can compare Blazor with Angular, React, or Vue. The name Blazor is actually a combination of words between browser and Razor. And Razor is the viewing engine. You can share server side and the client code app logic written in .NET. Render the UI as HTML and CSS for wide browser support, including mobile, of course, browsers. And instead of executing Razor views on the server in order to present HTML, and this is what's actually happening with the Razor pages and the MVC core, Blazor is capable of executing these views on the client, not on the server. No need to go to the server. It allows you to create rich interactive UIs using C Sharp instead of JavaScript. And that's a brave move from Microsoft to do this, to be honest. And as I told you that you can compare Blazor to Angular, React or Vue, because they are all a client-side frameworks. They are kind of similar in a way. So briefly, Blazor is trying to give you the option to write client-side applications using C Sharp. There is two versions of Blazor, as for right now, Blazor Server and Blazor WebAssembly, and we're going to explore all of these frameworks throughout the course. One last thing before we go is I would like to go through the history of ASP.NET. So back like pre-history, we had this framework, Active Server Pages, or the ASP, or the classic ASP. It was hard to work with. It is actually something very very messy, very bad, but you know, it was like before history, it was the first. So no need to be ashamed of what they created back then. It was a huge move. Still some company using this technique till now. Then with 2002, they introduced the ASP.NET 1 web forms, not the MVC. There was no MVC back then. Then with the time, ASP.NET starting to get more features like the master pages, scenes, localization, and the globalization. 2007, you had the link, dynamic data, Ajax. 2009, you had the major step for the MVC1 with the ASP.NET 
5 serves back 1, SB1 MVC1 was firstly introduced. Then it is starting growing with time. I think it's 2011 when MVC3 was introduced and this was starting to be a complete framework, starting to be more mature. Lots of company till now still using the ASP.NET MVC3 and up. Not all the companies has adapted MVC core till now. And then with 2012, they added more features, the web API, the single R, the MVC4 framework itself. And finally, in 2016, they released the ASP.NET Core 1. And there have been some changes to the ASP.NET Core till now. And I'm assuming even after I record this, there will be much more enhancement to the ASP.NET Core. So that's a very, very brief history of ASP.NET Core. It's a long journey. So let's stop here and see you in the next video.